Hey YouTube, what's good? It's your boy the American African. Today is day eight of a 22 day water fast. Day eight, you know what that means? We completed one week, you know? One week down. I woke up not too long ago. I probably got like six hours of sleep. It was decent. But I, I still feel like uh not sleepy. But tired, yeah. I don't feel sleepy, but I feel tired. So, you know, it is what it is, though. That's kind of how it goes sometimes. Get that apple cider vinegar cracking. You know, how we start off the day most of the time. On a good day. You feel me? It's the weekend. Well, actually, <laughs> yeah, I worked so much yesterday. I feel like today's Saturday. But today's Sunday, I think. Yeah, today has to be Sunday. Tomorrow is Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um,. Water fasting has been going well this this past week. I can't really complain about anything, you know. It's been going well. I'm laser focused on work. Laser focused on myself, the personal. And uh, try to understand where I'm at in my weight loss journey. I try to figure it out, like where am I at? You know, like the setbacks, the struggles, the wins, the good times, all of it. What, where, what exactly is going on and where exactly am I at, you know? Because let's say we're all humans and all humans are psychologically very similar, right? That would mean there's a rhyme, right? There's a rhyme that's going on. Like, there's something that's happening that has happened to other people. It's happened before. There's a rhythm. There's a cycle. And how do you break that cycle? And the reason I'm bringing this up today is I was watching a guy today talk about sobriety, right? I think he said around like almost 10 years ago he's been he's been going up and down with it and all that sort of stuff and um let's say let's just say let's just say they all, let's just say for the sake of this conversation that abstinence isn't the only solution to an addiction let's just say right then what's the other solution is it really all or nothing if this thing is really really psychological and it's like the way i'm wired or the way we're wired is like is very different then for sure you know the only answer is probably abstinence or something medical whether it's a drug or a surgery or what have you right but to do it to try and battle it on your own right they call it white knuckling it's too hard okay so that's the question you know the question is if this is an addiction is sobriety abstinence is that the only way meaning if i don't 
stick to this idea that yes, I have an addiction to food of some sort. Let's say an addiction to food, um, what do they call it? Is it additives? Yeah. Let's say I have an addiction to food additives, right? That's basically like salt, sugar. Um, what what can possibly be done without doing something extreme or doing something medical is there is there possibly a way to manage it and if there isn't does that mean this is what i was getting at does that mean that for the next 5 10 15 20 years i'll just be going up and down like this it will never stop because i'm not treating this as if it is an addiction. You get what I'm saying? It's like if someone's an alcoholic, but they don't subscribe to that idea that they're an alcoholic, they're going to battle with alcoholism, right? But let's say there's someone out there that never subscribed to the idea that they're alcoholic, and they just kept fighting it and battling it. And one day they were actually able to control it. Will we ever know if that person exists? I don't know. Does that person even exist? I don't know. But if all humans are the same... Right, I think it's pretty well known that like the only way to stop an addiction is abstinence, right? If you're a smoker, you can't just have, oh, you know, I'm just going to smoke on holidays. When I used to smoke, I tried that. It, it didn't go well. When I used to drink, I said used to. I still drink. When I drink, sometimes I try that. Like, oh, I'm just going to drink, you know, this holiday period, this holiday season, this weekend, this Friday. It doesn't really work, you know. It might work one time out of ten. So, is the only solution abstinence? Because I, I do believe that there's no way I'm addicted to food. Like, you technically, I should say technically, I don't think you can be addicted to food. Food is just too general, right? But you can be addicted to what certain things that are put into food that will now make you eat more, more of it. Let me give you an example. Let's say I love fried chicken, right? Now, imagine I eat fried chicken with no salt. Or imagine if I eat fried chicken that's baked. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just take away that one thing that bring me to it at a very consistent, constant rate, and it changes the game, right? Imagine saltless fries that are baked instead of fried. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's kind of like what I've been thinking about, you know? And I think it's something I've been thinking about for a long time. I remember last year, I think it was May, I had, I had came off a water fast or I broke a water fast early because I, um, I don't know if I regret it because I learned a lot. But when I was thinking about last year, I was like, this is, this is, this is, this was the start. This was the start of what I'm going through now. Last year I was online and I researched a question. I don't remember what the question was. And I got, I got to that website that's, is it called Quora? Quora? I forgot the name of that website where people ask questions. And it's like answers, right? And obviously, you don't know who the people are that's posting these answers. But sometimes you get like um, verified doctor, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? So there's one person on there that was responding to everyone's post about something. It's, it's, I mean, it had to do with food and trying to lose weight and stuff like that. And the person's answers was very the same. And he's pretty much trying to tell people that you don't have a problem. You just need to be mindful. You're like think, but it's not that it's not that deep. You don't have to think that much. You pretty much already know. That was the way he was answering the questions. Oh, I forgot the name of the book. Relax and just eat, or something like that. And you know, me being me, I was like, yeah, yeah. Mind you, everything that I had been doing so far, my weight loss journey had been working. But now I wanted to go on this new idea that, nah, I don't have a problem. I know everything I need to do. I just need to do it. Right? Willpower. Just do it. 
and I ain't gonna lie, like it hasn't been going so well. You know, when my willpower is strong, it's strong. But when my willpower isn't strong, it's not strong. You know, and that's that's a willpower. Once I let go of it a little bit, once I relax just a little bit, most of the time, I don't get the rope back. You know. So, back to the fasting. I drink a lot of water, but not as much as I feel like I should be, but I'm okay. I don't think I have a water problem yet. You know, it's one week though. Usually between day seven and day 10, I'll see what I'm made of. Uh-huh. Sometimes in some water fast, it's like day three, day four, day five. And some water fast is between day seven, day 10. And around the three week mark, if I make it there, I really know how my water fast is gonna go. Like I like water fasting. If I didn't have a weight problem, I wouldn't be water fasting. I would have never even heard of water fasting. I would have never even tried it. No, I would have heard of water fasting, but I would have never tried it. You know, I was like, well, what would be the point of that? Three days, no food, just water. I would have never tried that. But I remember the first time I ever tried it, how powerful it felt. Like I really just went three days with no food. Like it's possible. I remember the first day, I, first time I did two weeks, I was like, I just did two weeks of no food and no one knows. If people knew, they would think it like, that's not possible. You know what I'm saying? And then when I got into that 30 day territory, 40 day territory, I was like, wow, you could really just live off your body fat as long as you don't overexert yourself and put yourself into a crisis, you know, because of energy. If you just manage your energy, you stay pretty dormant, you have enough body fat, you have enough water, electrolytes to replenish yourself, you'd be fine. But I won't lie, COVID, the bubble, the COVID bubble, as we call it, in the NBA world anyway, the bubble helped me. You know what I'm saying? I just, I just so happened the way life happened that I timed my weight loss journey with COVID, and it wasn't intentional. You know, just in case you haven't heard it before, you're new to the channel, whatever. I started my weight loss journey in 2019. So in 2019, I already had my mind made up that I really. Like, I'm really serious. I'm going to lose weight. And I had already started to make changes, right? But in April 2019, I got promoted to my engineering team. And on Fridays, we go we go to this, like, other, this other site where we work in, like, a lab, right? Because we're like building our future network, right? We're testing out and all this stuff. And we, we went there. And mind you, there's like 10 to 13 engineers, right? So they, we all go out and get lunch together. And they always go to this, um, just like this cafeteria. It's it's on a, it's on a military base. There's like a cafeteria there. And during lunchtime, it's either they order pizza or everyone goes to the cafeteria, right? So my first time going, and it's funny because I was on call as well. And it's like everything just lined up. We were walking. I was the last person, right? And I, I had an asthma attack. I can't remember if I was already having asthma problems at that time, but I, I definitely had an asthma attack and I had to stop. No one saw me because I was in the back and they were all like, walking in twos, talking to each other, right? Mm -hmm. So I had an asthma attack. I stopped. No one noticed. I started walking back. And I walked all the way to my car. 
got my inhaler, used it, and I just stayed there, you know. And then I got texts, hey, where are you? We haven't seen you. Are you okay? Are you coming? Blah, blah, blah. And they didn't say, are you okay? But then I told them, oh, the on-call phone was going off, so I had to go and take a look at it. They were like, okay, yeah, we're still here if you want to come. I was like, nah, don't worry, I'm good. <laughs> so that was the beginning of my weight loss journey. When I realized I can't keep up with my future, like this is this is where my future is headed, but my health is headed like this. I won't be able to go with my future if I don't change, you know what I'm saying? My ways. It's like, okay, God put me in a position, I'm elevated, right? On my team at that time, I was the only black guy, you know, only black person. Imagine 10 to 13 engineers, all white guys, mostly old, all older than me. And I say white, I mean white, like there's not even an Asian, you know, there's not even anything. 100% white Americans. I was the only black guy, you know. So at that time, how old was I? 31 or something like that. I don't know. Time be flying. I don't even, I don't even know. But yeah, at that time, you know, I was like, man, I gotta keep up. I gotta go. I gotta go. This is my future now. I'm here now. What if I now get to the, now I got to the spot? What if I now die? That'd be so silly. So that's when I decided I'm definitely gonna start making changes. And I believe it was that same week or not too not too long after. I started keto intermittent fasting. So now when they go out to lunch, I tell them, oh, no, nah, I'm on a diet. I'm good, thanks. They order pizza, oh, no, nah, good, I'm on a diet. So in 2021, because, you know, because of COVID, we weren't going to work and all that stuff. 2021, there was a reason I had to go to their site to do something. I went there and they were all looking at me. And they didn't say anything, but... <laughs> They were looking at me like they saw a ghost. This shit was funny, though. I was seeing it in the corner of my eye. Um, I forgot why I brought up that story. But, yeah, I mean, that's what triggered it, you know? And usually, it, there's usually a crisis or an issue or a problem that usually brings us to that point. When we start to make a change for the better, right? Because if that never happened, who knows? You know what I'm saying? If things like that never happen, who knows? So, even even still to this day, when I'm relapsing, when I'm having issues, my weight is going up. It's usually something that will happen. It's usually it's more so something that will happen that will trigger me to start making changes versus um me just like okay it's time to start and I actually start. It's usually something will happen, you feel me? So when I started this new water fasting gauntlet, right? The end of June, definitely it was an issue with me. I can't even fit in my car. It was embarrassing. Like in order for me to get in my car, I, the roof has to be down. For me to get out, the roof has to be down. And imagine imagine how I look trying to put the roof back on. And the best way to put the roof back on is sitting inside the car because the little lever's in the middle. You know, I just, it was so embarrassing. It triggered it. I never, I, I never really regretted buying that car. But it got to that point where I said, I never thought that, damn, I could actually gain this weight back. You know, I bought that car at the peak of my weight loss. You know, when I had lost the most weight and I was keeping it off. And I thought, like, it's all up from here. But I, I, I didn't plan for the worst. It's kind of a good thing that it happened that way. Because what if I had a bigger car? Maybe I would have got all the way back big. Who knows? But, you know, when your stomach is touching the steering wheel, it's not a good feeling. When be, you know, it's like this. I used to drive with my steering wheel all the way down in my lap. My seat up close. Chair kind of back if I'm chilling. Or chair up front if I'm like having fun out there, right? Now my seat is all the way back. My steering wheel is all the way up. Just so I can fit. 
Not complaining, just saying. It's, it's things that made me say, I got to change, I got to change, I got to change, you know? It's always things like that. When I started this new water fast that I'm on right now, um, this 22-day water fast, <laughs> it's hard. I want to say I was relapsing, but I'm kind of hesitant to call it a relapse because it it could have gotten worse. You know what I'm saying? But because I've already written it down that from now to, to December, I'm, I'm on this water fasting gauntlet. I knew that I was going to get back up. You feel me? Let's say I was just water fasting willy-nilly. It would have been over. It would have been a relapse. I would have had to try and recover from it. So I think it is a, a relapse to some degree. Let's say it's a hundred percent scale. It was like a seventy percent relapse. You know, it was a seventy percent relapse. The day that I started, right, was basically Saturday night. Um, last week. And I woke up Sunday morning. I recorded the video and everything. But that week, I began to order from this cookie shop, okay? And me being me, you know, an Epicurean, a connoisseur, I want to try all the type of cookies. Thank God they were closed on Sunday. I never saw that coming. I went into my DoorDash app. Uh huh. We go order these cookies. Then I'm gonna start my fast. As I always say, it never goes that way. I'm trying to order. Closed. I look at the hours. Sunday closed. I said, damn. So I had to start my fast. But you see that one right there. That's like a. That's very lucky. If that didn't happen, I don't know that I would have actually started. I don't know that I would have really, really actually started. But once I start, I'm in it. Once I get through a certain period of time, and the length varies, it's more so like once once mentally I commit that, yeah, I'm definitely fasting, then I'm fasting. Like right now, I'm committed to fasting. But I've been working so much and I've been so busy, I still don't really realize that, yo, I'm water fasting, yo. And I really need to realize it because I don't want to reach a state where I think I'm normal and I'm going out there and doing shit, moving too much, and I, I reach a situation where it's like, oh shit, I gotta break my fast early. I'm kind of tired of failing water fast. Um, through 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 failing water fast, I definitely learned body limitations and I learned those conditions. Right, I've learned so many different type of conditions through water fasting. Right, whether it's hypoglycemia, hyper, hyperkalemia. Um, Hypotension. I learned so much different things because of water fast, you know what I'm saying? That I would have never known about. I don't know that I really needed to know about them, but <laughs> yeah. <sighs> so the most important takeaway from this, when I break my fast, whenever I break it, because I'm in this gauntlet stage, the most important, the most critical thing for me is to plan not how much I eat, but what I'm going to eat. Because if I say this is what I'm going to eat when I break my fast and I go and eat that, I'm good. Because if something else pops in my head, I can just clear it out. But when I go into a refeed and I don't really know what I want, but I know I want something, it's a problem. Because then I'll try something, I'll be like, nah, that's not it. I, you know, I'll just keep going. But if I say, okay, when I break this fast, uh, I'm trying to think of something. I want turkey, like, let's just say, okay. I want turkey, right? I go out and get my turkey. Then it's just a matter of, do I feel ready for the next fast? And once I'm ready, I go. Refeed period, very important. So that's that's just um that's my weakness right now. 
That's what I'm going to focus on, yo. Yeah, it's your boy, the American African. You know, we back at it. We back at it like we forgot something. Like we left something there. We picking it back up. <sighs> I'll catch you on the next video. One week in the bag. Four months ago? Four months ago. Peace.